And that commander gave him a plan that must have sounded like total lunacy. But it was with purpose that God just basically told them, you do your part. You're basically there to testify and watch me work. I mean, yeah, there'll come a time when you pick up a sword, but you're going to have to, you're going to, have to do what I tell you to do and, and let me take the wall. Let me take care of the walls. You're not, that's not your responsibility to go pulling down walls and figuring out how you're going to get through there to the people. I've got an army with me that's a whole lot greater than your army, and they're going to be able to take care of business. And when your time comes, you're going to shout, you're going to praise me, you're going to do exactly what I say, and God's going to take care of it. And God was testifying to his people. He was testifying to everybody in that land. There is, this is not just an army of men. This is an army led by the God of heaven himself. If we are less than that as individuals, if we are less than that as a church, then we are nothing. We are wandering in a wilderness. But we need this commander here. We need him in our lives. We need to bow to him. I mean, I'm talking about in the, the, the general corporate life of the church, but we're also in our individual lives. Most of us, in one way or another, are facing our own Jerichos. We know the way lies forward, but there it is, and there are the walls, and they look impenetrable. But there is a commander of the army of the Lord. If we will look to him and wait on him and trust in him, if our attitude and our actions are consistent with trusting in him, we have a God who will fight I was going to say, well, have a God will fight our battles. But what's going to happen is we're going to wind up fighting his battles. It's not like he's going to come and fix our, fix our wagon. We're going, to be, we're going to become a part of his plan because that's the thing that's going on here. This is not just a bunch of little individual lives and their little things. This is an eternal plan that God is, has instituted to call the people out and prepare them for eternity. The question is, are we going to be part of that or are we going to try to get him to be part of us? That's the difference. Do you get it? I want to be part of his plan. I want to honor him and look to him. I want to have the attitude that I don't know what to do. I need him every day to open my eyes. I need him in the little ba daily battles that I face, the decisions that I make. My attitude needs to be that Jesus is Lord. I want to do his will and not mine. But I know that when I stand in that place, there's an army with him. And I don't have to be afraid of whatever the devil mounts against me because i got the armies of heaven. I mean, how many glimpses do we see of this in the scriptures? I know you remember the story of Elisha and his servant. There was a foreign king who kept wanting to conquer the land, kept wanting to you know, take an army here and lie wait here. And, and somehow God kept revealing to Elisha Every plan the man had. And so he would tell the king, don't go there. And the king would, would go someplace else. And he'd say, well, I'll lie wait here and I'll, I'll mount this offensive. And, and uh, Elisha would go to the king and say, watch out, he's over there. And the king finally said, got his commanders together and said, which one of you is a, is a traitor here? Somebody's telling him our plans. And so, they, and so the, one of his servants pipes up and says, no, it's not that way at all. Elisha, the prophet is in Israel. God tells him the secrets that you tell in your bedchamber. We serve that kind of a God. You think the devil can sneak up and pull things on God? And, and, and do something that he doesn't know about? And so they say, well, we're going to, we better take care of this guy. That's our real enemy. Let's, we take care of him, then we, can, then we can go after the king. And so they surrounded by night the city where he lived. And he got up in the morning and his servants said, oh, master, what are we going to do? And Elisha said, Lord, open his eyes. Well, he first said, there's more with us than there is with them. He said, Lord, open his eyes. And when he did, he saw the army, but then he saw something behind the army. Horses and chariots of fire, far vaster an army that was with him. And, and in the course of the story, he says, Lord, blind their eyes. So he went and took their commander and said, you're in the wrong place. Let me lead you to the right place. <laughs> Takes them right into the capital city. 
hands them over to the king. And the king says, what do you want me to do with them? Kill them? He says, no, no. Makes a great feast for them. Sends them home. And that's the end of the, that's the, end of the story. That king didn't come bother them anymore. I'll tell you, we've got a God who can fight our battles. Not because they're our battles, but because they're his battles. You know, if we are rightly related to him, then our battles are his battles. Because we are a part of him. You go off on a, on a part of a business, a self-will, a course of self-will, that's not a good thing. You can see that in, in Jonah, can't you? You know, somebody might be saying, well, I thought he said he'd never leave us or forsake us. Well, that's a pretty good example of Jonah. God told him to go and, and proclaim a warning of judgment to Nineveh. And he didn't want to do it. He figured they'd repent and God wouldn't judge him, and he wanted God to judge him. A little like, like some of us, you know, you get prejudiced against people. God help us. But anyway, you know what he did? He ran the opposite direction. Well, did that mean that God left him? No, God never left him, even though he was not in the place of blessing. He was not in the place where he was doing what God's will. God didn't leave him. God actually was there, right there, sent a big fish. You remember all the story there, how God had a way of getting him to the place where he was willing to go? And he finally went. But sometimes we can get ourselves in some bad places when we exercise self-will. And God's, God's not going to lose you if you're his. But that's not a course of wisdom, is it? God has called us out of, a, out of a wicked world. We live in a world that is overrun with not just bad people, but there's a power of darkness behind that. But I'll tell you, the armies of heaven are available to his covenant people on an individual level, on a church level. That's what God has called us to. And, and I just pray that God will, will so burn this simple truth into our hearts that we will never lose it. We will never lose sight of who we are and who he is and what our place is in the grand scheme of things. I have all ideas that from that day forward, Joshua had a different outlook on things. He understood there was an unseen army with him and his place was to bow his, his face and serve this commander and honor him and just say, tell me what to do. Is that your attitude when you face the issues of life? Lord, here I am. I'm in a difficult place and I don't know what to do. Lord, I, my schemes aren't going to help at this point. Just doing what I want because I want it and my desires pull me in a certain direction, that isn't, that isn't what, that's not going to get it. Lord, I know you love me. Lord, I know you see everything. You see what the enemy, you see the pitfalls the enemy's trying to maneuver me to fall into. You see every issue here. Lord, just tell me what to do. Anybody here know a better, better strategy for getting through this world? God has an eternal purpose. He has called us to walk with him. He has called us to bow to heaven's commander. That's what I want to do. I pray that everyone here will do that in a larger sense, but in your individual lives and the issues you and I face this afternoon and tomorrow and the next day and the next. We serve a God who, who has sent a commander with the armies of heaven who will fight our battles. And I praise him this morning. Praise God.